Alyssa Welch and this is In the Garden presented by A Gardener's Notebook. For more information you can always visit the website douglasewelch.com. Well here we are today we're out here in the uh, in the front garden with our potatoes and uh, I realized I did need to get some more soil on these to hill them up a little more so that's all I've done today is just uh, open a bag of uh, garden soil from the garden center and we're just again gonna hill these up a little bit make sure they've got plenty of cover um, another reason you hill besides uh, giving the potatoes a place to grow is you protect them from sunlight because if you get sunlight on the tubers as they're growing they can turn green and that's not necessarily just a cosmetic problem green means that the potatoes have produced solanin which is the toxic ingredient found in both potatoes and their cousins tomatoes which is why you shouldn't eat green tomatoes either unless you fry them up first um, so by hilling up we make sure that the tubers stay under the soil they don't get the sunlight on them and they don't get the solanin production so we'll have as many to eat as possible when we're done with this project. As you can see here, here's one of our uh, sweet potato plants. They're going gangbusters. There's actually another one a little over to the left of it there and then a bigger one further down. So it looks like we're going to get three plants total out of these, uh, I think it was only four starts that we put in here. We'll do the same thing with the sweet potatoes. We'll keep hilling them up as well, just like we're doing with the regular potatoes and get as much production out of them as possible. Now you can see here that our, uh, what I think is a pumpkin you know it could be a zucchini I just don't know yet it's gonna take a little while to see we'll know better when we start to see the flowers but uh, that's our squash of some sort there and here are our onions again going gangbusters I think these are gonna do really well and I'm really happy to see them continuing on now you'll notice there's a little swath right through here that did not grow the onions are kind of stunted which few where there are left uh, I wonder if that's a shadow from the tree or just a place that doesn't get enough Sun during the course of the day. It could also just be uh, maybe it doesn't get the same amount of moisture or whatever, although I did fit this bed up quite heavily before I planted them. So that's going to be an interesting thing to watch because if it is a shadow, we're going to have to uh, just take that into consideration whenever we plant anything in this bed once the onions come out. We have a few other plants blooming here in the garden. This is a raphiolepsis here with these lovely pink blossoms. There's two kind of cross-shaped beds here in the front yard. It used to be all geometrically laid out with a couple circles, several triangles, and then these crosses in the middle. Um, the Raphaelipsis has always done pretty well. It handles the heavy hedge trimming we do to keep them in their geometric shape, which some of the azaleas really didn't take to that well. But you can see the lovely pink flowers starting to pop up there. You'll also see some more close-up pictures on the website if you check out the blog. And here you can see some of the exuberant blooms by our azaleas. These are the last of the azaleas to bloom. I think they get a little more shade than the other ones. That's why these are the last two. We had plenty of rain this wet season, this rainy season here in Los Angeles. So things have been going just gangbusters out here. It really shows what can happen in a decent year when we're not in drought, what the plants can do. And it also points up the fact how much I tend to underwater on those dry years. Um, my expense for my utilities doesn't come from a lot of water, it tends to come more from my electricity, but still we were under restrictions for watering the last several years, and I don't like to waste a lot of water, so unfortunately that means I tend to underwater the plants when they need it. Thank goodness these are heavily established plants, and so they can survive through a drought year or two without suffering too much because their roots simply go deeper into the soil and gather as much water as they can on their own. So that's it for this episode of In the Garden. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the potatoes, the sweet potatoes, my azaleas, the raphaelepsis, anything in my garden, please leave them as comments on the YouTube video, on the blog, wherever you feel most comfortable. I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear what's going on in your garden as well. You can always leave those comments over on the blog at douglasewelch.com slash A-G-N. Again, that's douglasewelch.com slash A-G-N. And that'll take you directly to the A Gardener's Notebook website. You can also find a link on the main page, douglasewelch.com. Until next time, keep flowering, keep hilling, and keep digging. <laughs>